Okay, this is the uh, continuation of the LPGC Cargo Operation Discharging uh, Part 7. So, in the previous uh, discussion of uh, Part 7A, we were actually uh, discharging already in full uh, discharge rate. Maximum rate that has been uh, allowed and, of course, uh, the capability of the ship. Now, uh, let's just uh, look at here that uh, some of the tanks are already to its uh, halfway uh, to its level. And, of course, some uh, tanks, or at least one, uh, it's already in its draining or stripping level. And now, uh, if you can notice here, uh, the pressure of the tanks are uh, going so low that uh, there is a chance that we may go to uh, zero or even negative. In most cases, uh, this happens and uh, there are uh, things that we should be able to do. Of course, uh, there are, of course, uh, means of uh, doing it. One is, uh, for example, uh, to go directly, we can actually do uh, a so-called uh, agitation. Uh, so, for example, if I choose uh, tank number one here, this one, as you can see, if I open the uh, I crack this uh, load line a little bit. I go there. Uh, that one is open, the load line. So that means to say I am discharging, but at the same time, I am putting back the cargo back to the tanks. So, in here. So, basically, I am agitating the liquid. So, if you have agitation, that means to say you create friction. If you create friction, you create heat. And if you create heat, then your boil off will go faster. So, you create vapor. And if you create vapor, then your pressure goes up, and thereby the uh, pressure will be stable, and hence your discharge rate will still be uh, in the stable condition. Because uh, you don't want to slow down or stop the discharge because of the reason that you have a negative pressure in the tanks. That will cause delays, and when you say delays, you're talking about time. Time is money, so you don't want to delay your vessel because we are given a time frame to discharge the cargo. So, stopping the discharge or suspending the discharge is not an option. So, this is one option that you can do. You circulate the cargo back to the tank so, could, so that it could agitate the liquids. But, of course, there is a better way to do this other than that, if, not, if this is not sufficient enough. One is, of course, the vessel is fitted with a so-called vaporizer. In this model, we have a vaporizer which is a combination vaporizer inside a condenser. Well, you will find this in the... Uh, Relative function plant in this model. Of course, in some ships, in most ships, the vaporizer is separate from the compressor area. But in this model, in this simulator, it is inside the uh, compressor plant. So this is the cargo condenser, but it is also a combination cargo vaporizer. So basically, uh, first we need to drain a little bit of that uh, so that uh, we are sure that there is no uh, condensation or water in it. And then let's just assume that it's, closed, it's uh, drained. Then uh, we heat up a little bit, crack open the steam, and of course, basically we have already given the uh, engine room an ample time to uh, give us a steam supply. Now we need to line up to put in liquid in that area because it is a combination of vaporizer. So we have to open this valve. I'm sorry. This should be the C59. We go here, in here. Crack that on. Yeah, you, we put it to fully open. And we go back here so you see it's open now and we'll find to we need to find a way to send in the liquid inside the combination of cargo condenser cargo vaporizer don't be confused like i mentioned earlier there is a separate vaporizer for most ships in this vessel it's not so since we are uh, offloading we trace this line from number one and it goes up here and of course this one should be open now it's open already and i'm sending the liquid to the liquid goes here no it cannot go there oh yeah it, it can it goes here and through here down here and there so now we are sending liquids to that vaporizer so of course we can open more a little bit of that steam uh, something is not right with the bulb it should be fully open put in more all right so now we have steam here and then the liquid rises in that area and of course the liquid turns to vapor and of course we need to send that out to the vapor line and it has an undertone and if we go to the cargo pipeline it, this is this is the valve that I just opened and it should go in here here this one yeah so trace it it goes here through here through there up it goes there down here now it supplies we don't even need this one actually you can close that one so it goes to your vapor line for your number one tanks four and of course likewise it goes to your two and number three the uh, pressure will be divided uh, accordingly for each tank 
Uh, if the tank pressures are have a big difference, then you have a problem with your <laughs> lining up. So you should be able to doubt that there is something wrong. So, but they should be close together, and that is one hint that you should look at every now and then. So that is one uh, solution that you can do. Now, uh, other than that, like the first one I mentioned, the agitating the liquid uh, going back to the tank that would produce. And of course, if it still is, you cannot maintain a positive pressure, then there is no way but to, uh, of course, slow down the rate of discharge. Because you don't want to stop uh, all the way, then you just have to slow down a little bit. But it should be sufficient enough because you are already vaporizing some of the liquids so that it could produce vapor and then it will go to your uh, tank uh, top vapor line. So you should be able to produce enough uh, pressure. Not so high because you will have a problem as well with the uh, uncontrolled venting. So it should be uh, sufficient enough that you can maintain a passive pressure at the same time maintaining your discharging rate without any delays. In fully pressurized vessel, the method that uh, is being used is uh, they use a compressor. This compressor suck vapor from one tank and then of course uh, compress it and then send it back to the vapor line of the other tank. So then it produces uh, more uh, pressure on that tank and then the, since uh, the vapor are common then the pressure goes up. Uh, that is also utilized in discharging uh, as well when one of the cargo pumps is not uh, functioning, let's say it's been damaged and they don't have any uh, means of uh, pumping out the tanks but by true pressure. So they pressurize the tank using a compressor. So they suck vapor from the other tank uh, that is uh, with uh, a good pressure and then they send it to the other tank with the defective pumps. And once you pressurize the uh, cargo tank, then it should be able to discharge the cargo because uh, it is applicable for fully pressurized LPG vessel but not for fully refrigerated because uh, uh, it, it cannot uh, meet up a higher uh, pressure because it's uh, fully refrigerated and the pressure is not designed in a high pressure. For semi-pressurized, you can at least somehow do that provided that you are not going close to the uh, relief uh, marge setting and thereby uh, it should help to discharge your cargo. That is for semi-pressurized, semi-pressurized fully refrigerated vessel and semi-pressurized semi-refrigerated LPG vessel. So this is the function of the so-called vaporizer. When you have uh, a problem of your uh, pressure in your tanks and you don't want to stop, you don't want to spend because of delays, then that's one. Uh, th those are the solutions that you can do to when you are discharging without delays, is to produce uh, pressure in your tanks. And I have let down the solution as uh, it was shown. Of course, you have to, to uh, monitor the pressure when they are stable enough and they, you have sufficient enough then you can stop sending liquid and stop the steam as well so you can stop sending liquid make sure that uh, close this one so now you have uh, stop sending liquid and you'll be able to monitor that the liquid is still uh, a little bit high in here let it uh, uh, vaporize till uh, it's almost done and when it's gone then you can close it the steam you can close the steam and that's of course, you can close this one later if you want to. Or you can just leave it so that the vapor can just go out anyway, since it's an undetermined bulb here. So, there you go. Discharging is still going on without any problem. Now, uh, in addition to this, uh, let me just go back to the alcohol glycol system. Uh, prior to the arrival, uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, when discharging, uh, of course, you have to check your cargo pumps before arrival, and there, there is the so called meager test. So if your uh, shop, uh, cargo pump shop, are uh, stuck up and definitely there are some hydrate formation in the pump sump area and you cannot move it then uh, manually, then uh, injecting a glycol is the solution. So in here, uh, there is a glycol system. So this is the glycol system uh, you are looking at right now. So for example, on tank number one, uh, just assume that it, this is on the pre-arrival period, it's not running. So we can actually inject uh, each other to the top or to the bottom, a little bit of uh, gly glycol. And of course, uh, we can uh, connect the glycol here. Uh, something is not right. Anyway, it should be. Let me put it on. And there you go. Should be able to uh, inject. Uh, oh, this one should be open. Anyway. And uh, to make sure, we can inject also on top. And once the shop is uh, freely moving, then you can uh, start the pump with power and it should be okay. And of course, uh, you have to stop that uh, first before you do that.
there you go and then close this one now if you don't have this kind of system like a, a fixed speed system then there is a manual injection point that you can do so with glycol alcohol well if you can uh, understand the properties of a glycol alcohol you should be able to read that in the msds uh, the properties uh, of uh, glycol alcohol they do not freeze they are called actually anti-freeze so basically it uh, melts down the ice formation and there you go it's clear because running the pumps with the shaft is stuck with an ice formation this can destroy your impeller or even your shaft and you have a bigger problem so there you go